Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bushwick Book Club Seattle's virtual presentation of original music inspired by Zadie Smith's novel, White Teeth. My name is Wes Waddell, and I hope that health and comfort are as much a part of your quarantine as anything, along with good books, good music, and the occasional pantsless video conference. Distance high fives to you all, especially our health and essential service workers. If you're new to the Bushwick premise, for 10 years we've programmed shows featuring a rotating cast of songwriters who have each written a new work especially for the event, inspired by their experience of reading that month's book. And that's just what you'll get digitally here. Coming up, you'll be treated to debut compositions from Lana McMullen, Jed Crisologo, Olivia Brownlee, Mike Vadava, Shadi Bianca Vatdat, Chris Pogue, The Go Janes, and Jasper Leepak plus special guests and surprises, and, of course, the Bushwick quiz, complete with special play-at-home component. We welcome your donation in lieu of a ticket charge through the links you see on your screen, bit.ly slash bushteeth, or paypal.me slash bushwickmw. And as a 501c3 nonprofit, all donations are fully tax-deductible. White Teeth is a story about so many things, and one of them is roots. At any point during the broadcast, we invite you to visit the Google map at bit.ly slash wtfamilymap. Try all lowercase if it gives you trouble. And place a pin for yourself and as many ancestors as you like. You'll need to be signed into a Google account and may have to click edit to see the pin or marker option under the search bar up top. Join us in a little exercise in visual community across the generations since we can't be together in person. Toward the end of the show, we'll share it. Zadie Smith was 24 when White Teeth was published in the year 2000. It's hard to imagine our contemporary literary landscape without her voice, but White Teeth was Smith's debut, and the timeline got Bushwick thinking. Do you remember what it was like the first time you did something now central to your practice and identity, or met someone similarly important to you now? Throughout the evening, we'll hear a few reflections on this from our community, and feel free to share your own in the comments. For example, the first time I met Jeff Larson, executive director of Bushwick Northwest, was probably right around the time White Teeth was published. His hair was enormous. The first time I wrote a song for him inspired by a book, 10 years later, I was nervous. And that's how I knew I really cared about this idea. I remember the first time I ever got up on stage and had to play the guitar. My dad entered me in a talent show when I was seven, eight years old. Boy, was it scary. I had to play the Red River Valley reading the sheet music with my little classical guitar. And every gig since then has been a lot more fun. First time I was a campfire leader in the summertime, I remember I felt really happy singing with everybody. I got more comfortable with singing in public and it made me want to pick up the guitar. The first time I was about to sing jazz at Tula's, I had circled the blocks for hours, and then my knees buckled when I went to open the front door, so I knew I had to walk around the block some more. Hey everyone. Um, I really enjoyed reading this book. It was a really impressive mixture of deep extended metaphor, political and social commentary, really well-developed characters, just all the way around, super interesting, super well-written. Um, my song is from Samad's perspective, um, but it ends up being a little bit from Mr. Jones' perspective too. Um, I latched on to his feeling of displacement um, with his feeling of isolation from his culture and his God um, and the ways that those manifest in his world and in his life and in his relationships with other people. So this song is called I Can't Go. Come away Miss Jones, the light is growing low and you're outside with your ear pressed to the ground. Change for better why you're sitting there. But I think you best be moving on. Come away. It's too late. 
to make amends that I can't go. Cause I hate to be alone. Feel my coin when I get to the corner. Match my eyes up with the white lines in the road. Tears I stay and pray my fingers find a hold. And heads I, I take my things and go. Come away. again shallow and I've lost a promise then but I can't go cause I hate to be alone though I'm tired of looking out there's nowhere left that I can call home last Monday won't come to its calling so i set up for keeps at the crossroads come away come away come away but i can't go Can go. Ooh, I can go. Ooh, Hey, this is Jed Crisologo from The Sun Killers, and this is my first Bushwick Book Club. And I couldn't be happier to be joining you guys in this exploration of White Teeth by Zadie Smith. It was a really interesting task to interpret someone else's art through your art, but luckily Zadie gave us so much to work with. Um, particularly in my song, I really attached myself to her examination of identity, whether that was through the device of two physically identical twins that are just diametrically opposite in every other way, or what it's like for a first or second generation immigrant trying to make their home and their identity in a place that's new. Um, this song is called Stiff Upper Lip, and I hope you enjoy it. Change your name, change your face, do it all with style and grace. Down the busy streets, with desire knows your face. Pick the quiet side, don't look them in the eye, and make sure to mind. Send the right one home 
Thanks to Lana McMullen and first-time Bushwicker Jed Crisaligo for getting the music underway. You can find links for all of tonight's performers sprinkled throughout the comments and on the event page at bit.ly slash bushteeth, where, can't say fairer than that, you can also find a convenient ticket donation link. Many of tonight's performers are also watching along with us, so feel free to announce yourself and share other ways we can hear and support you through this disruptive time. And the music rolls on with another first-timer, Olivia Brownlee, followed by old-timer Mike Vadova. I... I don't really know what to say about this. I found the book really difficult. I... I, um... It's... It's very... It's not a pretty book, you know? It's not like a fairy tale or anything, which is... But at the same time, it kind of is, because you get to look at the characters, um machinations on each other and try to figure out what to learn from it uh which is i guess the benefit of all stories um and i highlighted a bunch of passages that i thought would lend themselves not just to a song but also to my thinking these days and the things that are troubling me and the things that i'd like to see in a parable or a fable um so i i was i was writing a bunch of like activist type songs about loving your neighbor and taking care of each other and I was like man this is so I sound so boring <laughs> so I, I I wrote a children's song instead Samad and Archie were both in the room and each man was whistling a different tune 
closer they got, the less they could hear. So they just whistled louder and covered their ears. The neighbors were lawn mowing innocently when along came this unnerving cacophony. No one could hear a discernible song, just terrible noises that didn't belong. They called the police as the nuisance was grave, for each man was hell-bent on the other to save. But the cops, hearing whistles like siren horns blare, they left thinking coppers were already there. It never got better, just louder, more shrill, since neither would bend to the other man's will. It went from a cry to a roar to a shriek, till Arch noticed Sam demonstrate a technique. Samad brought air to his mouth from his nose. That's clever, thought Arch. Let me try that. Here goes. It doesn't mean I'm going to change up my song. It just helps me out. And it's smart, man. Well done. Likewise, said Samad, I've noticed a thing that you do when you whistle and not when you sing. You can whistle as well breathing in as without. I'm not changing either, but it helps me. No doubt. And so it continued till little by more Their ears came uncovered, they sat on the floor And while neither much changed either song he once blew They whistled in tune and made up something new Hi, I'm Elisa Newhall, Bushwick's Development Director, and I'm here with Melissa Montalto, our Membership Coordinator. We would like to invite you to become a member of the Bushwick Book Club. Our membership comes with a bunch of perks. We have secret members-only events and special member gifts. Hey, Melissa, I sure do love your Zoom backdrop. How would I get one of those? Isn't this great? I've been messing around with it for the last hour. It's made by our very own Michael Wallenfels and will be sent out to all of our members. Sweet. How does one become a member? Sign up. It's easy. You just go to the link below. Hi everyone. Mike Vadova here coming at you live from uh, Mike Vadova headquarters uh, in Beacon Hill. Seattle, um, stuck here in quarantine. Uh, look how long my hair is. That's pretty crazy. It's the longest uh, hair uh, in the world currently. Um, it's in the Guinness Book of Hair Records. And uh, I'm sitting here and um, I'm happy to be here at, at the Bushwick Book Club Seattle show for Zadie Smith's uh, White Teeth. I did read the book, uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought she was really witty. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me was this bar, this bar, this bar, this dive, the shitty dive bar that Archie and Samad that hung out at all the time, and it was a shithole, and they just hung out with their other old old friends, and they talked about bullshit that didn't matter, and they 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 loved it. They would go there for everything, for birthdays, celebrate celebrate holidays, uh, New Year's Eve, things like that, to hatch plans, to like come up with schemes, the brilliant schemes to kidnap their kids or whatever. Like, what the hell? Uh, but anyhow, uh, I, I miss that. I miss going to a stupid dive bar and just drinking with my friends. That's the worst part about this quarantine is that I can't do that. I miss it so much. And uh, that bar, uh, as divey as it may be, it, it really struck a chord with me, um, and I miss it so much. And I can't wait to have beers again with my friends, or 
maybe with one of you, one of you lucky people that are watching right now. We can go get a beer when this thing's when this thing's in the can. The other thing, one other thing I wanted to mention is like it's very rare uh, that uh, there's a book that we read for the Bushwick Book Club that has an actual Mr. T reference. You know, I'm. It, it, I, I was reading the book and I it jumped off the page and I can't believe it. You know, I, I may be stretching it a little bit, a little bit here because it wasn't actually Mr. T. It's more of an A team. They said A team is more of an A team reference, really. But that's all I need. And so I was fucking so pumped that I was able to put in a a, a, a Mr. T reference in my song. So uh, hopefully uh, you will enjoy it. Uh, but you probably uh, won't enjoy it as much as I did uh, because I love that guy. I, I have to tell you that one time, it, it, this is probably the, the only time I could remember ever being punched as an adult. It happened outside of the Nine Pound Hammer. And um, she, was, she ended up being sort of a regular down there. And we gave her the nickname Punchy, which, which is fun. And, uh, you know. I miss her. So, Punchy, if you're out there watching this, uh, hi, it's me, the guy you punched. Uh, so, anyhow, I don't know if that made any sense. It probably doesn't, but here's the song. And, and uh, the other thing is, uh, next time you see me in just a moment, I'm suddenly going to have a guitar in my hand. You don't see it, but it's just going to magically appear. It's one of my special powers. So, here we go. There's no pool, there's barely a room Sitting on the stools, nothing but old guys Uncertain times, outside the doors That's not the case when you're inside Looking for a perfect place to race down to the bottom The regulars will tell you that there's only one good option You gotta go to O'Connell's with me Go to O'Connell's with me, yeah Be nice to see yeah, I'm gonna be there soon And I know you'll be there too It's the place to be For family men The hopes and dreams nowhere inside But ladies, stay away, if they don't approve of all the spartan around and killing time. So grab a bite and drink a pint, sit back, enjoy the ruckus. As two grown men debate the merits of B.A. Baracus. Go to O'Connell's with me You gotta go to O'Connell's with me yeah. Be nice to see ya I'm gonna be there soon And I know you'll be there too Seeking answers for the world's greatest dilemmas Always asking for a friend Let's hear it for the golden age of luncheon vouchers Your time's coming to an end Years go by, stories collide, still nothing seems to matter. 
Storm she punched me in the face outside the nine pound hammer. Go to O'Connell with me. You gotta go to O'Connell with me. All right, here we go, everybody. Let me hear it. Go to O'Connell with me. Oh, you guys sound awesome. You can do better than that. Go to O'Connell with me. All right, just the ladies this time. Go to O'Connell with me. Oh, that was pretty good. Just the fellas. Go to O'Connell with me. All right, just the British people. Hey, you know, I'm going to go to O'Connell. I play the bass. I'm in the Beatles. All right, everybody. Go to O'Connell with me. Just me this time. Go to O'Connell with me. All right, last time, everybody. Here we go. Go to O'Connell with me. Be nice to see ya, Mr. T. I'm gonna be there soon and I know you'll be there too goodbye everyone I miss you Hello Bushwick world, Debbie Miller here. And as you can see, I've got some uh, Bushwick posters in the background. Um, I remember the first time that I ever played at an open mic, uh, my hands were shaking. Um, even just moving the capo around on my guitar, I, I felt like so inept and I didn't really know how to sing into a microphone. Um, gosh, I was so nervous, but I also remembered the exhilarating feeling of connecting with an audience and people clapping and ever since that moment I was basically an addict and now when I perform it's just the most natural thing in the world so uh, yeah there you have it the first time I directed a play I felt overwhelmed with a 32 person cast as a high schooler but I was also so excited and felt ready, and so I guess that's why I'm still doing it today. Hey everybody, it's Evan. Uh, hello to the whole Bushwick Book Club. Uh, for White Teeth, I'll tell you that the first time I ever wrote a complete story, I was about eight years old, and it was a spelling assignment for homework. Uh, I had to put my vocabulary words into a story and my story went on for like four pages because I just couldn't stop I just kept writing and writing and it, it made me feel very alive and uh, from then on I just knew I wanted to be a writer and an author friends it's quiz time but in an era when much is asked of certain online platforms sometimes they don't deliver which is a shame, because we had a doozy. Comedian and storyteller Emmett Montgomery, super librarian Kate Laughlin, and author and associate director of Seattle Arts and Lectures Rebecca Hooves all joined me this past week over Zoom to play a stirring round of Species of Mouse or Victorian Era Insult. Terms like yellow neck, church bell, cat lap, spring hair, wagtail, big eared hopper, hedge creeper, and lobcock flew fast and furious through the ether, where our gallant crew applied their best and worst logic and were often skunked anyway. In the end, it was Emmett Montgomery who came in first, followed by Kate Laughlin, and then a determined Rebecca Hooves. And somewhere out there, our friends at Zoom are still processing the not really that large file that they usually turn around within minutes. Such is our world today, full of small frustrations that leave one grateful for the lack of larger ones, should we be so lucky. It really was a fun bit, though, and we'll post it separately as soon as it's released from its own apparent quarantine. Thanks to Emmett, Kate, and Rebecca for playing, now it's your turn. And now, audience, some mouse or Victorian era insults specifically for you. Throw your best guesses out there in the comments, make your case and raise the stakes as you see fit, but play fair, don't Google it. Round one, bobtail. 
Qual. Scrub. Bobtail, qual, scrub. What do you think? Mousy or dis? Let's see in three, two, one. Bobtail is an insult, a lewd woman, or one that plays with her tail. Also an impotent man or a eunuch. Qual is a mouse. Pretty ferocious looking one at that. And scrub is an insult, a low mean fellow employed in all sorts of dirty work. Audience round two, Meter, Silky Pocket, Mickey, Meter, spelled M-E-A-T, Silky Pocket, Mickey. Got a few comments last month that we didn't give you enough time for your ferocious guessing and bickering in the comments, so I'm going to stall for just a little bit before revealing in three, two, one. Meter is an insult, that's a coward. Silky Pocket is a mouse and much cuter looking than the qual. And Mickey, that's a mouse. Thanks for playing, now back to the music. Hello everyone, my name is Shadi Bianca Vassat. And I absolutely loved this book. So the, the song I'm about to share with you is a musical theater adaptation of one of the scenes in the book. So in this scene, Clara, who is 19, has just married Archie, who is in his, I think, late 40s, early 50s. And they just come to their new house for the first time. And Clara is sort of leaning against the garden fence taking in the house, taking in the neighborhood, and watching her new husband, Archie, move in all the boxes and furniture into their new home. And she's sort of lost in a moment of thought and contemplation and trying to sort out and remember exactly why she made this choice to marry this man. So that's, that's the scene. And because I said musical theater and because representation and casting is so important. I think it's worth clarifying that because Clara is a character of Jamaican descent and I am not of Jamaican descent, I won't be portraying her as such, so you won't hear me um, change my accent or anything like that. Um, I kind of see this as what I, the composer, would do to record the song for the actor actually playing the role so that they could learn the song. So. Just a brief clarifying note, and this is Clara's song. So this is it. It's a doormat and a doorbell and two gardens and a toilet that's inside. So this is it. Between the streets with parks and libraries and streets with defunct sandwich bars that no pride. Heaps with me, but me when I begged him to take me far away, as far away as you can manage. His greatest pleasure in this life is beans on toast. I understand he's got no aims, no hopes, no passion. We'll be mildly happy housemates at the most.
when I first met him, he was good. He is good. And it's better than my mother's neighborhood. And it's only love. I've never had it anyway. It's only love. That's a price that I can pay. It's only love. Coming inside, Clara. Hello, my name is Chris Pogue. I am so happy to be here. Uh, I'm happy to be here in the digital world with you. I wish we were in a room together. Uh, because that's where I love playing music. That's how I love expressing my art and my craft that I've spent so long working on my whole life. It's so strange. It's so strange. One day this is all going to pass, but <laughs> we're all going through it together here. Um, white Teeth, what a great story. That was so difficult for me to grasp at first. A very long, overarching, intertwined kind of story. So uh, it's got this 30 year span, several different characters that, that the chapters focus on. And um, um, Samad Iqbal is one of them that kind of, uh, I wouldn't say he grabbed me right away, but, but by the end of the book, there was a chapter where I just, <laughs> I just realized his character. I, he's almost like, he almost comes across as, and this is maybe just me taking it uh, from my perspective, because the story is based in London. Samad is uh, from Bangladesh, and uh, he reminded me of like a John Cleese, like from Faulty Towers or something like that, like an Indian John Cleese. Uh, so anyway, there's this point where he's in his bar, his watering hole, and his friends are there, and his son uh, is back in London. They finally get together and they're in this bar and it's like they're meeting for the first time in 10 years and he has this sort of, oh, this feeling. Anyway, this is my song and it goes like this. <laughs> you changed I'm sitting at the bar I don't know who you are as you order the bacon in spite your brother's a quitter his green bow tie and sweater I wish you two would leave me alone as I'm sinking in my chair my children don't care as this unholy world goes to shit na na na
embarrassment had me I don't know how I went so wrong When I sent you away I hoped morals would stay Oh, what they left me with an unholy son Your mother I loved I once tried to leave For a teacher that had such a charm Hey there all, Jeff Larson here, Executive Director of Bushwick Northwest. I want to say thank you to all of you participating in the show tonight. We couldn't do this without you. Now, the book club is not all that Bushwick Northwest is up to, though. With our education program, Style, Songwriting Through Youth Literature Education, we have online classes available multiple times per week for our young students out there. Every week, you can sign up your kiddos to participate in a collaborative songwriting class inspired by the written word. That includes read-alouds with local authors, original soundtracks from local musicians, Native American storytellers, all in live classes. The style team is still trying to find out the best programs and times for all of you brand new teachers out there. Parents. So please, let us know if you have any questions or comments. You can find out more about our programs at learningwithstyle.com, and we hope to see you soon. That was Shadi Bianca Vatdat and Chris Pogue giving us a little mini musical character study. Keep those thumbs and hearts coming, and again, we welcome your tax-deductible donation in lieu of a ticket charge via bit.ly slash bushteeth or paypal.me slash bushwicknw. And feel free to contribute pins in the audience roots map at bit.ly slash wtfamilymap. And here now is more white teeth inspired music from first time act The Go Janes, followed by Jasper Leepak. Ready? Hi, I'm Kathleen Tracy. And I'm Patrice O'Neill. And I'm Arnie Adler, and we are the Go Janes. And we're here in beautiful Seward Park, where we met a couple of weeks ago to start writing this song. So this is a quote from White Teeth. Towards the end of the book, when Joyce comes to visit Alsana. Involved is neither good nor bad. It is just a consequence of living, a consequence of occupation and immigration, of empires and expansion, of living in each other's pockets. One becomes involved, and it is a long trek back to being uninvolved. We like that quote because in this time when we have to be far apart from each other, we still feel how we are indeed so involved with each other. And our society is reacting in a variety of ways to the irrefutable fact of this involvement. Right. Um, Coincidentally, I came upon this uh, Amy Hempel quote um, about that was quoting an Arab proverb, which was, when you encounter danger, sing to it. So we kind of conflated these ideas of being involved and in singing to your despair. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we took out this big piece of paper and we put it on the table and Arnie just started writing down random little bits that we were um, thinking about and once the song took a pretty good shape then we had a pair of eagles fly over and confirm that indeed this was the direction <laughs> we should be going um, and that's where we came to 
So this song is called Who Can Name the Wind? So the first time I ever performed music in front of a live audience, I was so scared. I did it with my back to the audience. Hey everyone, this is Claudia Castro Luna sharing a story of firsts. The first time I was ever in a car accident, I was a sophomore in college riding my bicycle from the apartment where I lived on to campus. Um, I rode through a parking lot not realizing that a car was coming in the opposite direction 
and the car was blocked by a big van uh, so I couldn't see the car and the car didn't see me um, so I rode straight into the passenger side window smashed my head against the glass destroyed the bike flew off onto the ground and next thing I knew I was being helped up by one of the passengers um, and when I looked down to get up uh, from from the pavement um, I could see white specks strewn in front of me and I knew that those were my teeth because I could feel something was wrong in my mouth so I proceeded to to collect to pick up all of these little white pieces these white shards put them in my hand they drove me to the health clinic where the doctors um, and the dentists on staff went to work and reattached the pieces of teeth back to 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 the ones that were still in my mouth and they rescued me and here I am telling you this story hi I'm so happy to be a part of this Bushwick book club for white teeth I wanted to do this one because I had read white teeth uh, not long after it came out it came out in 2000 and at the time I was a college student and an aspiring novelist and I really was inspired by her because she was 25 when she published this and it is so clever and profound and wonderful and entertaining and um, I wanted to reread it just to reconnect with that part of me that still wants to be a writer of books and to publish one someday and um, gosh I just I just loved loved being in the story again and the part that really um, really got to me or the theme that got to me was this theme of being between places between homes between countries between um, between wars like the the past and um, the interpretation of it between between history and between the present between sanity and madness and there's this uh, description here that I'm going to read to you of what Alsana thinks is the difference between people. The difference between people, it was in the earth, it was in the sky. You could divide the whole of humanity into two distinct camps as far as she was concerned, simply by asking them to complete a very simple questionnaire of the kind you find in Woman's Own on a Tuesday. Are the skies you sleep under likely to open for weeks on end? Is the ground you walk on likely to tremble and split? Is there a chance that the ominous mountain casting a midday shadow over your home might one day erupt with no rhyme or reason? Because if the answer is yes to one or all of these questions, then the life you lead is a midnight thing, always a hair's breadth from the witching hour. It is volatile, it is threadbare, it is carefree in the true sense of that term. It is light, losable like a key ring or a hair clip. And then the other part that inspired me was the scene where Samad and Poppy are um, being chased through the streets by Mad Mary, this, this insane character um, who, who lives on the streets. And Samad and Poppy are beginning their affair and they are on their way to, I think, a motel. And um, Samad feels like Mad Mary is chasing them because she recognizes insanity and madness in Samad and she wants to look him in the eye to recognize it and um, Zadie Smith has this description of the insane that I really liked um, but these people announced their madness they were better less scary than Mr. J.P. Hamilton they flaunted their insanity they weren't half mad and half not curled around a door frame they were properly mad in the Shakespearean sense talking sense when you least expected it so yes, Samad is a character who walked that line internally um, between sanity and madness. And then Alsana, his wife, she felt like disaster was always on the horizon. Um, here's my song. This is my first ever original on banjo, so forgive my loud notes that are going to ring out. I haven't mastered the skill yet. I hear a distant I hear the mountains tremble 
the new music contributions to the show. So let's now take a look at ourselves. Thanks to those who dropped a pin in the audience roots map and to everyone who chose to join us tonight with eyes and ears. As Zadie Smith reminds us through the voice of Marcus Chalfin in chapter 12 of White Teeth, we all go back as far as each other. Here's a little snapshot of this moment's gathering and the places we've called home. Thank you again for the digital company and support, and for your own lights in the world at this time. Let's make some at-home noise for Lana McMullen, Jed Crisoligo, Olivia Brownlee, Mike Vadova, Shadi Bianca Vatdat, Chris Pogue, The Go Janes, and Jasper Leepak, who brought thought and song to us today. Let's also recognize Alicia Healy at the Winter Blue Room with the technical and streaming support that stitched this thing together and beamed it out to you. Thanks also to the Bushwick production team of A. Lisa Newhall, Melissa Montalto, Michael Wallenfels, and Executive Director Jeff Larson, and to our 2019-2020 season sponsors splashed across your screen right now. The Bushwick Book Club Seattle will wrap our 10th season up with original music inspired by Arnold Lobel's Frog and Toad on June 13. See you right back here for that, and please stay safe, connected, creative, and kind till then. Keep reading, keep singing, good night.